Welcome and Shabbat Shalom to those of you who are just logging in. It's good to see you. Good morning, good afternoon. Uh, we'll get started in a minute. As far as props go for today, my recommendation is to have two blocks or thick hardcover books, uh, a strap or a belt, and then two blankets or towels. And my suggestion for how to fold them, I'm gonna undo one of them so that you can see. This is my towel folded in half. And then from there, kind of like an accordion, fold it into thirds. So this is what mine looks like, first folded in half, and then like an accordion folded into thirds. Okay, we are gonna go ahead and get started. Um, I think everybody here is a familiar face, so I'll keep my introduction rather brief and short. I'm Zach of Open Temple. I'm happy to be here with you. And we are continuing on our path of exploring the intersection between the practice of yoga, the asana physical practice, and the Jewish tradition of Musar. Musar is a set of soul traits. And the idea is that each one of us embodies each of these soul traits. And if we dedicate a certain amount of time in our lives, a few days at a time or a week at a time to really focus in on each of these soul traits, we can help bring them to the surface and pave an ethical path for moral mensch-like behavior. So we have looked at so many different soul traits, loving kindness, gratitude, patience, humility, equanimity, order, um, truth. And today we have arrived at the soul trait of trust. Um, a word which in Hebrew is bitachon, and embedded in that word at the root is the word botach, and botach means to lean on or rest on someone or something, which I think is such a, a great root uh, for this word as we go through our, our yoga practice, this idea of leaning on or resting on something, but it gets more specific. Bitachon really implies that we're leaning on, resting on our faith in God. God is present in this idea of, of bitachon. Um, and we're going to look at what that means and, and how that unpacks for us throughout our yoga practice. So with your props, two blocks, uh, two towels or blankets, and your strap, here is how I want to suggest that you start for today. And if you don't practice with these props, no worries. Um, there will be modifications. So take your two blocks or books and place them towards the, the back of your mat, one and back of the other. And then take your two blankets or towels, place them on top of the blocks or books so that you kind of have this wonderful tower set for yourself. And then you're going to sit with your hips just resting up the bottom of the blocks or your books, knees bent, feet planted on the floor, arms extended in front of you, palms facing in, and slowly start to lower down onto your block tower. Let your arms rest alongside your torso, and then straighten your right leg, straighten your left leg. Let your ankles roll open palms up towards the ceiling and breathe in and out. Inhale through your nose and exhale out your mouth.
and continue that slow and steady cycle of breath. And alternatively, if you're not practicing with the props, no problem at all. Just start in an opening Shavasana, using this as an opportunity to just quiet your mind. And the inhale draws in breath and oxygen in through your nose, down through your throat, expanding your chest, bringing energy and life into your body. and use your exhale as that vehicle to let go of the distractions on your mind. For those of you who are to-do list makers, use the exhale as an opportunity to one at a time, just let go of items on that list so that you can seize the opportunity to be here and now. And place one hand on your belly and one hand on your chest. So that you can feel the effects of that inhale and exhale. As you take your next inhale. Feel the expansion of your chest in the palms of your hands. And as you exhale, just notice, observe the sensation of your chest sinking back into your body. Take a couple more cycles of breath in this chest opening position. And now with your next inhale, draw your arms up towards the ceiling, palms face in towards each other. And as you exhale, extend your arms over your head towards the back of the room. And now inhale, arms up towards the ceiling. And exhale, arms extend down in back of you towards the back of the room, palms face in towards each other. Inhale, lift your arms up towards the ceiling. And exhale, let your arms descend in back of you. And grab on to opposite elbows. And inhale through your nose. And exhale out your mouth. And again, inhale through your nose. and exhale out your mouth. And as you take your next inhale, release your hands from your elbows, extend your arms towards the back of the room. And now again, bend your elbows, grab onto opposite elbows, but do so the opposite way. And a few more cycles of breath.
We're working the joints in our shoulders, opening up the chest. And with your next inhale, extend your arms in back of you. So release the grip from your elbows. And now inhale, extend your arms up towards the ceiling. And this time as you exhale, lower your arms down alongside your torso. And press into your forearms, press your palms flat down into the ground and pushing on your forearms and elbows, lift your torso up and remove the blocks and your towels and blankets. You can just throw them off to the side. Keep your blocks handy. And then lower back down onto your back with your knees bent. Arms alongside your torso. Walk your feet in towards your tush until the tips of your fingers touch the backs of your heels. And then inhale, lift your hips and pelvis up towards the ceiling. And exhale, lower your hips down. We're gonna do this a few times. Inhale, lift your hips and pelvis and hold, rotate your inner thighs down towards the ground. And exhale, release, lower your hips and pelvis down. Let's do that three more times. On your inhale, you lift your hips and pelvis, rotate your inner thighs down, press your knees towards the front of the room, and exhale, release down. Two more times. Inhale, lifts you up. Remember those actions. You're rotating your inner thighs down towards the ground, pushing your knees towards the front of the room, and exhale, lower down. Last time on your own. Inhale and hold it. Make your adjustments. And then exhale, lowering back down. Inhale, draw your knees into your chest. And then make circles with your knees clockwise. It's a great way to just massage your lower back and release your spine. And then switch the rotation of your knees, counterclockwise circles. And then pause. And then just rotate your hips from right to left and left to right. And next time your knees are towards the right, let your knees fall over to the right. Come on to the right side of your torso into a fetal position. And then pressing into your hands, push yourself up. And two options. Option number one is to sit in Sukhasana with your shins crossed. And you can start with your right shin crossed in front of your left shin. Option number two, it's a little bit more vigorous, but it will help prepare us for poses to come, is to sit in Virasana. And the way that I like to sit in Virasana, which is hero's pose, is start on your knees, take one of your blocks or books, place them between your ankles, and hug, them in, hug the block or book in with your ankles, and then you can sit down onto the block. So you're here in hero's pose in Virasana, or you're sitting in Sukhasana. Fingertips on the floor and inhale, lift your arms up, palms face in, arms in extension, and exhale, lower your arms down. Turn your palms out, inhale, arms up. And exhale, arms come down. Palms face out. Inhale, arms lift up. 
and exhale, arms lower down. And then arms come out in a T position. Inhale, swing your right arm over to the left. Use your left arm to make a hook around your upper right arm. And inhale. And exhale. And inhale. And exhale. One more inhale. And exhale. Inhale, arms back out into that T position. And exhale, arms come down. Inhale, arms float up into that T position. Exhale, swing your left arm over to the right. Use your right arm to make a hook around your upper left arm. And three cycles of breath. Inhale through your nose. And exhale out your mouth. And inhale through your nose. And exhale out your mouth. And take one more cycle of breath. And your inhale floats your arms out into that T position and exhale, arms lower down. Place your hands on top of your knees. And if you're sitting in Sukhasana with your shins crossed, now is the time to switch the crossing of your shins so that your left shin is in front of your right shin. Let your eyes close, turn your gaze in, and let's just return to a slow and steady cycle of breath. Inhale through your nose. And exhale out your mouth. Inhale through your nose. And exhale out your mouth. Continue that slow and steady cycle of breath and let your mind settle on the soul trait for our practice today, this idea of bitachon. Trust in, leaning on the idea of God, the idea of something divine in the world. And I think many of us can acknowledge that it would be lovely to perhaps live in a universe where we could trust that everything would be okay outwardly all of the time. But we have certainly seen through our own life experience past year that that is not the case. And so the question that I think one question that floats up to the surface is how do we stand in relationship to an idea of God or something divine more powerful than ourselves in a universe that is not always balanced, that has rough edges to it. And the scholar that we are drawing on most frequently through this yoga practice devoted to Musar, Alan Marinus, suggests the following, that it is up to you whether you see this world as a very botched creation for which God is to blame, or whether you accept that this apparently flawed life is actually just as it should be created in God's wisdom and act accordingly. And so if we accept that the universe can be out of balance and that there can be need and desperation, and we trust in that, 
And if that's part of God's wisdom, then I think it calls to attention what is our role in this trusting relationship? Inhale through your nose. And exhale out your mouth. Press your palms together in the center of your chest. Rest your thumbs on your breastbone. Take another inhale. And exhale. And open your eyes. We're going to move forward in our practice and hopefully discover what our role is what we each embody that we can bring to this trusting relationship that we're building, that there's goodness in the world. So come onto your hands and knees into a tabletop position. Spread your fingers, index fingers point towards the top of the mat. And let's take a few rounds of cat and cow just to work on our spine. Inhale, reach your chest and heart forward, arch your back. And exhale, draw your belly into your chest, round your back into a cat position. Inhale into cow, reach your heart and chest forward, arch your back, lift your tush up. And exhale, round your back, draw your belly into your chest, into a cat position. A few more times, inhale. And exhale. And inhale. And exhale. One more cycle, inhale, and exhale. And come back into a neutral position. Your back is flat. Draw your big toes to touch. Widen your knees apart. And shift your hips back onto your heels. Nestle your torso between your thighs. Extend your arms out in front of you. Flatten your palms. And you decide if you want to bend your elbows and lower your forearms onto the ground, or if you want to keep your arms and elbows straight. You're in Balasana, child's pose. And Marina suggests that bitachon can come in two forms, this idea of trust. It's really interesting the difference between the two. The first form is that God will look out for us, period, end of sentence. And one example from the Torah is the idea of us wandering as a Jewish people, Exodus from Egypt, wandering through the desert. And every day when we wake up, rather than carrying the anxiety about the food, where we're going to find it, manna falls from the sky. And that is our food that God has provided. And we can trust in that rhythm. And a second idea of bitachon, this idea of trust, it's a little bit more vague. It's more of a stretch. That we can accept that whatever happens, there is a reason behind it. There is a plan behind it. There is a learning opportunity within it. And sometimes that plan may be transparent. Occasionally, we may be able to see that diagram, to see the blueprint, but that more frequently it's hidden. And that this relationship of trust in God, in the universe, requires a little bit of faith. Inhale in through your nose and exhale out your mouth. 
And if your elbows are bent and your forearms are on the ground, start to walk your fingers forward to straighten your arms, lift your forearms up and root firmly into your hands. Shift your torso forward, briefly passing through a tabletop as you tuck your toes, lift your knees up and then shift your hips up and back, come into Adho Mukha Svanasana, Downward Facing Dog. Start with a slight bend in your knees. Really root into your hands. Place blocks or books underneath your hands if your wrists are sensitive. And then shoot your hips up to the back corner of the room. And then start to lower your heels down towards the ground, taking the bend out of your knees. And then inhale, shift forward into plank. And you can immediately modify by lowering your knees to the ground. And then inhale, shift your hips up and back. Adho Mukha Svanasana, downward facing dog. Inhale, come forward into plank. And exhale, Shift your hips up and back, downward facing dog. Inhale, come forward into plank. Pause for a moment, press your heels back. Keep your gaze on the ground. And then lower your knees to the ground. Lower your chin to the ground. Lower your chest to the ground. And then untuck your toes, straighten your legs back, and you're on your belly. And walk your hands back a couple of inches so that your hands are aligned with your upper ribs. And your elbows may be flopping open, draw them into your torso, root the palms of your hands down into the ground, and inhale, reach your heart and chest up. Come into Bhujangasana, a low cobra position. Really hug your elbows into your torso and exhale, lower down. Inhale, lift your heart and chest up. Bhujangasana. And exhale, lower down. One more time, inhale, Reach your heart and chest up. A really good back bend, chest opener. Draw your shoulder blades together. Spread your collarbones. And then exhale, lower down. And now bring your left forearm in front of you, parallel to the top of your mat. So your elbow is bent, your left forearm reaches towards the right of your mat. And then inhale, press into your right palm, lift your heart and chest up, bend your right knee, draw your right heel in towards your tush, and then lift your right arm up and back, grab onto the inside of your right foot, and grab onto your ankle and draw your right heel in towards your tush. Inhale and exhale. Keep your gaze towards the front of your mat and lowered onto the ground. That's how you protect your neck. One more inhale and exhale. Slowly release your right shin back down and second side. This time, bring your right forearm in front of you parallel to the top of your mat. So your right elbow is bent and your arm is turned in 90 degrees towards the left. Bend your left knee, lift your left shin up, reach your left arm up and back Grab onto the inside of your left foot. So hand around your left ankle. 
and three cycles of breath. Inhale and exhale. Inhale and exhale. One more cycle of breath. And exhale, slowly release your left ankle. Left shin lowers down towards the ground. And now stack one hand on top of the other underneath your forehead. Lower your forehead down onto your hands. And just wiggle your hips from right to left and left to right. And then extend your right arm towards the back of the room, your left arm towards the back of the room, your forehead is on the ground, and we're going to come up into Shalambhasana, a locust pose. Inhale, reach your forehead up, torso lifts up, arms lift up, palms face in towards each other, keep your feet rooted onto the ground and exhale, lower down. Adding on, inhale, bring your chest up, bring your arms up, interlace your fingers, press your palms together, and shoot your knuckles towards the back of the room. Draw your shoulder blades together, spread your collarbones. One more inhale, and exhale, Lower down. Adding on, inhale, chest up, hands float up, knuckles reach towards the back of the room, and now add your feet. Lift your feet up, spin the inner part of your thighs up towards the ceiling. Keep your gaze down towards the ground to protect your neck. One more inhale. And exhale, release down. And those of you who practice with me frequently, you know that you are in the pilot seat. I'm just making suggestions. So if that was plenty of a stretch, stick with that. Otherwise, bend your right knee, bend your left knee, lift your shins up into the air. This time, inhale, lift your heart and chest up. Use your hands to reach back and grab your ankles both at the same time. Inhale, lift your heart and chest up higher as you straighten your arms, lift your knees up, draw your knees in towards each other and find yourself in Dhanurasana, a wheel pose. One more inhale. And exhale, lower down, release your ankles, lower your shins down. And again, stack one hand on top of the other underneath your forehead. And take a rest. Just come back to that slow and steady cycle of breath. So in thinking about this idea of bitahon, of trust, and the version of it where the trust is that there might be this bigger plan and an opportunity for learning and self-realization, not just in the peaks, but also in the valleys of our lives, Marinus offers the following. This is not the trust that you will be safe, but rather that if you are hurt, there is real meaning and purpose to the pain. We are handicapped because we can only see part of the picture of life anytime, and often only a small part. And so we draw faulty conclusions about some, what something means. Something that we are at risk of doing so frequently. 
And why am I bringing this up on the mat? Because as we go through these poses, sometimes we follow the sequence blindly, not really understanding how one pose connects to the other. But why do we stay on the mat? Why do we stick with these practices? Because there's this element of bitachon that we're using this practice to lean on something that we believe will help us realize a dimension of our inner power, of our inner strength, something that will strengthen our core physically, but also figuratively. So lift your forehead up, press your palms into the mat, fingertips pointed towards the front of the room, elbows reach in towards your torso, and then push yourself up onto your knees, float through tabletop, tuck your toes, Shift your hips up and back, Adho Mukha Svanasana, and immediately start to walk your hands towards your feet until you find yourself in Uttanasana, in a forward fold, bending your knees, interlace your fingers behind your back. We just did this on our bellies. Now we're standing on our feet. Lengthen your arms, reach your knuckles up towards the ceiling and slowly start to take the bend out of your knees, straighten your legs. So your arms are in flexion, reaching behind you. Knuckles float up towards the ceiling. The crown of your head is lowered down towards the ground. And inhale. And exhale. And inhale. And exhale. Release your hands down towards the ground. Slowly start to rise up lifting up one vertebra at a time. Keep your gaze down on the ground. And when you are standing up straight, lift your gaze up towards the front of the room and walk up towards the top of your mat, standing in Tadasana in mountain pose, your big toes are touching, heels a couple of inches apart. If you're feeling a little unsteady, you can step your feet to be hip width apart. That's totally fine. That's a great modification. So pick a version of Tadasana. And let's start with a few half sun salutations. Inhale, arms float up, Utita Hastasana. Exhale, folding forward, Uttanasana. Inhale, lift your chest up halfway, Ardha Uttanasana. Exhale, folding forward into Uttanasana, forward fold. Root into your feet, rise up, Uttita Hastasana. Your arms are floating up towards the ceiling. And exhale, lower your arms down into Tadasana, Mountain Pose. Let's do that sequence again. Inhale, Uttita Hastasana, arms float up. Exhale, Uttanasana, folding at your hips. Into a forward fold. Inhale, Ardha Uttanasana, come halfway up, flatten your back. Exhale. Release into Uttanasana. Inhale, root into your feet, rise up, arms up, Uttita Hastasana. And exhale, arms down, Uttanasana. Pause for a moment. And what does yoga have to add to this idea of bitachon, of trust? It is an opportunity to work on our self-trust. We turn our gaze in, we claim time for ourselves. we focus on self-care so that we can better understand our abilities. 
so that we can work on our own social, emotional, physical balance so that when we step off the mat, we can enter into trusting relationships with others. So learning to trust yourself, we're gonna do Surya Namaskar, half sun salutation again. And this time I'm just gonna cue the breath and you supply the movement or action, whatever inspires you. So inhale. And exhale. And inhale. And exhale. And inhale. And exhale. We're gonna do it one more time, trusting yourself to be your guide. I'm just gonna cue the breath. Inhale and exhale. And inhale and exhale. And inhale. And exhale. Great job. Going to move on to Surya Namaskar C, Sun Salutation C. Inhale, float your arms up, Utita Hastasana. Exhale, fold forward into Uttanasana. Inhale, come halfway up, Ardha Uttanasana. Exhale, Uttanasana, folding forward, bend your knees, flatten your palms, inhale, step your left leg back, lower your left knee onto the mat, untuck your left toes, inhale, arms reach up, you're in Anjane Asana, your right knee is pressing forward, exhale, lower your hands down and back, your arms are in flexion, interlace your fingers, here we are again, flatten your palms in towards each other, draw your shoulder blades together, spread your collarbones, open up your heart and chest, let your inner light shine forward. One more inhale and exhale. Inhale, release the interlace of your fingers, arms float up and exhale, Lower your hands down, palms frame your front foot, tuck your left toes, lift your left knee up, step your right leg back. You can immediately modify plank by lowering your knees down and either take the vinyasa or lift your hips up and back. If you're taking the vinyasa, you shift your torso forward, bend your elbows lower into chaturanga, Roll over your toes into Urdhva Mukha Svanasana, upward facing dog, and then exhale, tuck your toes, shift your hips up and back, Adho Mukha Svanasana, downward facing dog. And at any time, lower your knees down, shift your hips back onto your heels, and take a child's pose. This is your practice. Inhale, turn your gaze forward between your hands. Step your left foot forward, lower your right knee onto the ground. Untuck your right toes. Inhale, lift your torso and arms up. You're back in Anjane Asana on the other side. Exhale, lower your arms down. Arms move towards flexion. Interlace your fingers behind your back. Flatten your palms in towards each other couple cycles of breath. Inhale, press deeper into your left knee and exhale. One more cycle of breath. And then inhale, arms float up. Exhale, arms come down, flatten your palms, tuck your right toes, lift your right knee up and step your right foot forward to the front of the mat. You're in Uttanasana. Inhale, Ardha Uttanasana, come halfway up. 
Exhale, folding forward. Inhale, root into your feet, rise up, arms up. And exhale, lower your arms down into Tadasana. So that sequence was our sun salutation C, Surya Namaskar C. We're going to do it another couple of times. Inhale, arms float up. Exhale, folding forward, Uttanasana. Inhale, Ardha Uttanasana, halfway up. Exhale, folding forward, bend in your knees, step your left leg back, lower onto your left knee, untuck your left toes. Inhale, torso and arms float up. Exhale, arms lower, stretch out in back of you, interlace your fingers, flatten your palms together, bend deeper into your right knee, open up your chest and heart, and then inhale, arms float up. Exhale, arms come down, frame your right foot, tuck your left toes, lift your left knee up, step your right leg back into plank position, and take the vinyasa, meet in Adho Mukha Svanasana, or stop to rest in child's pose. Let's take two cycles of breath. Inhale. And exhale, inhale as you spin your inner thighs towards the back of the room. And exhale, and then turn your gaze between your palms. Inhale, step your left foot forward, lower onto your right knee, untuck your right toes. Inhale, reach your torso and arms up. Exhale, lower your arms down, interlace your fingers behind your back. Draw your knuckles down, press deeper into your left knee, and then inhale, arms float up. Exhale, lower your hands down, frame your left foot, tuck your right toes, lift your right knee up, step your right foot forward. You're in Uttanasana. Inhale, Ardha Uttanasana, come halfway up. Exhale, folding forward, Uttanasana. Inhale, reach into your feet, rise up, arms float up. And exhale, arms down, Tadasana. Great job. We're going to do Surya Namaskar C one more time. And this time, I want to invite you to close your eyes. Bitachon. Have trust in yourself. Know that there will be rough edges. And this is the beauty, one of the small silver linings of not practicing in person. There are so few silver linings to this virtual practice, but you don't need to worry about the embarrassment. You are only your self judge and let that go. So you're gonna close your eyes and keep your eyes closed throughout the Surya Namaskar seat. And of course, there is a fine line between being trusting and being reckless. If you know that you are accident prone or you're facing dizziness, then you might want to keep your eyes open. Starting together in Tadasana, inhale, float your arms up. Exhale, folding forward. Inhale, come halfway up. Exhale, folding forward, bend your knees, flatten your palms. Inhale, step your left leg back, lower onto your left knee, untuck your left toes. Inhale, torso lifts up and arms lift up as you bend into your right knee. Exhale, lower your arms down into flexion. Interlace your fingers behind your back. Straighten your arms, knuckles point back and down. Open up your chest. And then inhale, lift your arms up. Exhale, arms come down. Hands frame your front foot with your eyes closed. Tuck your left toes. Lift your left knee up. Step your right leg back. You're in plank position and either take the vinyasa 
or go immediately into Adho Mukha Svanasana, downward facing dog. So it's true. We all have moments where we can't see what is in front of us. We need to trust our inner compass, our inner light to move forward. Inhale, turn your closed eyes forward. Step your left foot forward, lower onto your right knee, untuck your right toes. Inhale, chest and arms come up. Exhale, lower your arms down, interlace your fingers behind your back. Draw your knuckles back and down, bend deeper into your left knee, and then inhale, arms come up. Exhale, lower your hands down, frame your front foot. Tuck your right toes, right knee lifts up. Step your right foot forward to the top of the mat. You're in Uttanasana. Inhale, come halfway up, Ardha Uttanasana. Exhale, folding forward, back into Uttanasana. Inhale, root into your feet, rise up, arms up. And exhale, arms come down into Tadasana. Before you open your eyes, take two cycles of breath. And open your eyes. See if you're now standing in the middle of the room, or maybe you're in another room altogether, or maybe you're on your mat. Bitachon, working on this soul trait of trust, knowing that we can't always see the grand plan. Step into the center of your mat the long way. Step your feet about three and a half to four feet apart, toes turn in, heels angle out. Prasarita Padottanasana, wide-legged forward folds. Start with your hands on your hips, elbows reach in and back and draw in towards each other. Inhale to lift your chest and heart up and exhale folding forward. Lower halfway, and then lower all the way. We're going to be here for a good minute or so. Lower your hands down towards the ground. If your fingertips don't reach, widen your stance. See if you can flatten your palms onto the ground. And while we're hanging out down here, a Shabbat story that comes from the Chafetz Chaim. It's a great illustration of Bitachon. And the story starts that there was once a woman who was visiting a village other than her own. And she goes into the Beit Knesset, into the synagogue on Shabbat. And at first, everything seemed so wonderfully familiar. She felt at home. But then she started to notice some things that seemed out of place. She noticed that there were some people, some congregants dressed so nicely, seated towards the front of the synagogue. And yet when it came time for the honors of the Aliot, the people being called to the Torah, those honors went to a bunch of scruffy people who seemed kind of unkempt, standing at the back of the room. And she didn't understand why the honors went to them. But the service proceeded. And then she noticed that the rabbi, when the rabbi approached the time to give her sermon, her words were about the weather. Just seemed kind of weird. And then after the service, everybody was schmoozing, sticking around. And a lovely, lovely lunch was put out on a buffet, and yet nobody was eating. And she didn't understand. Didn't make sense. 
Reach your hands back onto your hips. Draw your elbows in towards each other. And inhale to lift your torso up. And exhale. This woman thought to herself, you know, what do I do? What do I do when the world doesn't make sense? I don't get it. Why are these peculiarities occurring? Interlace your fingers. Start with a bend in your elbow. Hinge forward, lower halfway down. And now straighten your arms and elbows. Reach your knuckles up towards the ceiling. Let the crown of your head descend, descend down towards the ground. And so this woman, this visitor, decided to do something about it. And she went up to one of the villagers and said, help me understand, what is going on here? Why these strange customs? Why did the honors of, the, of being called to the Torah go to people who seemed unkempt, standing in the back of the room? And the congregant said, ah, these were individuals who were unjustly imprisoned. And they were just released. And our community is celebrating them. Ah, said the woman. Okay, I understand that. And, and why was the rabbi's sermon about the weather? And the congregant said, well, we've been experiencing a drought. And many of us are farmers. And all we are thinking about is our crops, our produce. And the woman understood wasn't just a sermon about the weather, it was a sermon about what was going on in the lives of the people in the village. And she said, okay, and I get that, but you know, there's this beautiful lunch, why is nobody eating? To which the congregant said, well, once a month, we prepare the lunch and instead of eating it ourselves, we invite in neighbors who are unhoused and they are our guests. So that is a lunch that is for them, to honor them. Inhale, bring your torso back up. Release the interlace of your palms, hands on your hips. And so we come to learn that sometimes when things don't seem right, when we don't understand, there could very well be reasoning behind it. Step your feet together. I wanna to suggest that you grab onto your belt or strap and you can just swing it over your left shoulder so that it's there for you. We're gonna come into Gomukhasana arms. Inhale, arms extend out into a T position. Reach your left arm up. Bend your left elbow and let your left hand fall to the upper part of your back. Bend your right elbow, loop your right arm back and around. And now grab on to opposite ends of your strap or belt. Use your left hand to pull up while you simultaneously use your right hand to pull down. And if you don't have a strap or a belt, no problem. You can just grab onto your shirt, or if you have the flexibility and strength to let your hands, your fingers touch, you can grab onto opposite fingers, and again, use your left hand to pull up and right hand to pull down. And some of us might have that left elbow flopping open, draw your left elbow in towards your ear, Let's take one more cycle of breath, inhale, and exhale. Inhale, release your hands from behind your back. Arms come back into a T position, and exhale, lower your arms down. Switch the strap, the strap or belt, this time to your right shoulder. Inhale, arms extend out. Draw your right arm up towards the ceiling, bend your right elbow, lower your right hand to your upper back, use your left arm to come down and around, grab onto that strap, use your right hand to pull up, your left hand to pull down, or you're grabbing onto your shirt, or your fingers are interlaced. 
And this time, hug your right elbow in towards your ear. Let's take three cycles of breath. Inhale. And exhale. And inhale. And exhale. One more inhale. And exhale, release, arms float out into that T position and arms come down alongside your torso. Great job. You can take the strap, put it off to the side. You're doing great. Come back to Tadasana at the front of the mat. You're in mountain pose. Inhale, arms lift up. Exhale, folding forward. Inhale, come halfway up. Exhale, Uttanasana, folding forward, bend your knees, flatten your palms. Step your left leg back, step your right leg to meet it. Lower onto your knees, bring your big toes to touch and shift your hips back onto your heels. Nestle your torso in between your thighs and release your forearms down onto the ground. And as we deepen our journey into the soul trait of bitachon, trust, we're exploring this idea that sometimes trust has to be with a bit of faith, even though we can't see that grand plan. And let's be real, it's one thing to be a little confused in a ritual about who's getting the honors and what the sermon is about and who's eating the food. The stakes there are pretty low. There are much greater dire examples of when the stakes are high and we completely don't understand. As people are wiped out by illness, Homes and communities are shattered by natural disasters, Holocaust, the AIDS epidemic, or people are in violent relationships of abuse. How do we bring bitachon? How does that show up during heat, during that intensity? So we're going to come into a rather vigorous pose. You're in child's pose. Walk your hands forward, arms straighten, elbows and forearms lift up. And now come into a tabletop position. Lower your forearms onto the ground. Interlace your fingers. Thumbs point up, tuck your toes and shift your hips up and back into dolphin pose. Walk your feet in. And observe the way that your breath is fluctuating. You want your shoulders stacked above your elbows. The crown of your head is pointing down towards the ground. You may want to add on by inhaling to lift your right leg up and back. And then lower your right leg down. Inhale, lift your left leg up and back. And lower your left leg down. Let's take two more cycles of breath. And then bend your knees and sit back down into child's pose. And in doing his research around this idea of bitachon, Alan Marinus was learning with one of his students, a woman 
whose daughter had suffered through the rape at the hands of her father. And this woman was sharing, how is it that I can demonstrate trust? How can I possibly lean on God in the face of this horrifying event? And what she came to realize, what I share with you today, is she said the following, I have arrived at a place where I trust that no matter what mess mankind makes, no matter what the devastation, God can bring good and right from it. I do not believe it was ever in God's plan for my child to be raped or for the other 100 atrocities I could name off the top of my head. However, I now trust that God will be with me as I walk through my particular fires and will be there to provide the ways and means of healing. And for those of you who have shown up to the mat over the past several weeks, we are working on refining these soul traits in recognition that we each embody light. We each embody abilities to bring forward, definitely during times of celebration and also in times of heat and fear. So whereas we can't understand always what's going on around us, we have what to offer. Let's try dolphin pose one more time. Come forward into tabletop, release your forearms onto the ground, interlace your fingers, tuck your toes, shift your hips up and back. We'll be here for a few cycles of breath. And identify one of your inner traits that you can draw forward during this time of heat to help you sustain your practice. Your body might shake. Again, yoga gives us this opportunity to work on our self-trust, our self-actualization. One more inhale. And exhale, bend your knees, lower them onto the ground. Sit back onto your heels. And then bring your torso up. So dolphin, you can come to sit on your tush. Dolphin was definitely one of our peak poses. And we are ready for our second peak pose. And I'm going to introduce a word in this yoga studio, a type of pose that we so rarely do, an inversion. For a lot of people, inversions might trigger a little bit of fear, a little bit of self-doubt. Well, guess what? If you have been flowing through the poses so far, you have already done inversions. An inversion is when your heart is higher, excuse me, when your hips are higher than your heart. So being in Adho Mukha Svanasana, your hips are higher than your heart. At the beginning of the class, when we did a version of bridge pose where you lifted your hips up and your back was on the ground, your hips were higher than your heart. So you already have it within you. I want you to take your blankets, which are already stacked, place them towards the back of your mat. So here are my blankets towards the back of my, my mat, stacked evenly on top of each other. Fold your mat in half so that your mat comes over the stack of your blankets. And then sit with your hips just in back of your stacked blankets. I'm gonna wait for you to catch up. And by the way, if you feel done and you wanna just put your legs up on the wall, that's a modified inversion, you can do that. 
Lower your back onto your blankets. Your shoulders are just at the edge of your blankets. And your head is on the ground. And we use these shoulders to protect our neck and head. Knees are bent. Walk your feet in towards your hips. And then you're gonna lift your hips up. Start to slide your shoulders underneath your torso. So first we're gonna take a bridge pose, right like this. And then exhale, lower your hips down. And now to come into shoulder stand, you're gonna lift your legs up towards the ceiling come onto your shoulders, lift your legs up into the air, press your hands into your back, and then walk your hands up your back, which actually means walking them down towards the ground. Going to be here for just a few cycles of breath. So again, remember the definition of an inversion is when your hips are above your heart. And we've done so much work throughout this yoga practice to help make this pose accessible. Your arms are in flexion like we've done so many times. We've done multiple poses to open up your shoulders. Spin your inner thighs towards the front of the room. We've done that. Take one more inhale. And then exhale. Slowly start to lower back down onto your back. Extend your right leg. Extend your left leg. And then press into your forearms, lift your chest up, open up your mat. Remove your blankets. Lower back down onto your body. Legs extend out in front of you. Draw your knees into your chest. Shift your hips over to the right edge of the mat. Lower your knees down to the left. Extend your right arm out to the right. Turn your gaze out to the right. We're going to take a supine twist before we settle into Shavasana. Bring your knees back up towards the ceiling. This time, shift your hips over to the left side of the mat. Let your knees fall over to the right. Turn your gaze out to the left. And then knees back up towards the ceiling. Extend your right leg forward, your left leg forward. Let your ankles roll open, arms alongside your torso, palms up, and settle into your Shavasana. Feel your heels sinking into the earth. Feel the weight of your legs settling down into the ground. Let your spine sink into the mat. 
and take a moment in stillness and silence. Wiggle your fingers and wiggle your toes, bringing a little bit of life back into your body. Draw your knees into your chest and pause. Rock forward and back, building up some momentum until you can rock up into a seated position, sitting in Sukhasana. Right shin in front of left, hands on top of your knees, palms facing up, and let your eyes close. I want to leave you with one more idea, suggestion from Alan Marinus around this idea of bitachon. Bitachon is the inner attitude that respects that whatever is happening in our lives is nothing more or less than the curriculum that God gives us through any of the myriad channels God has available in the world. The stretching and pulling by love as well by blows is what brings us to the threshold of growth that we would likely, almost certainly, never otherwise approach. Press your palms together in the center of your chest. And for those of you who saw the movie Pleasantville, that's what I often think about. What would it be like to live in a universe where everything was perfectly lovely? And yet, black and white and gray without color. When the world was created and we were instilled with the power of free will and choice, that brought color to the universe. But with that coloring comes the rough edges. So we have within us the ability to bring forth our soul traits to build this world of trust, to offer resources for each other to lean on, botach, to lean or rest on. The foundation of a trusting relationship. Press your thumbs into your breastbone. Inhale, exhale, let your chin lower to your chest. Namaste, Shabbat Shalom.